Hello, everybody, and welcome to On The Radar, episode number 62 for Thursday, May 29th, 2014. Whoa, it's been an interesting day here. Very interesting day here uh, at the at the Radar Gaming Studios. Um, but we're here for On The Radar, and actually, surprisingly enough, we started this show on time. Um, I, I mean, I was, like, like, it was that kind of day where I was eating dinner at, like, 6.55, like that was the kind, that's that's the kind of day I'm having here. My name is Nick Craig at Gamecast Live is my Twitter handle. RadarGaming.net is my website, and this is on the radar the show that is dedicated to bringing you the latest in gaming and tech news. My co-host, the Sony fanboy, oh, the definitely. recent back to iOS convert, Jake Sombrowski. Hello, how are you doing, Jake? I'm doing good. You know, kind of a crazy day, but uh, do good. Why is it a crazy day for you? What's going on? I just finished eating dinner. Um, oh, wolfing it down. You know, gotta finish that before the show, so you're not uh, not all hungry during the show. So yeah, I'm doing uh, good. Now we didn't do a show last week. Uh, I was feeling a little under the weather. I still am. I'm still having 100 percent recovered. Jake is now starting to feel a little eh, but uh, luckily we caught it. Uh, or he's, he's feeling fine now. Uh, I'm sure sure tomorrow I'll feel like garbage, but that's okay. It's because as long as we did it on the radar. <laughs> um, if you notice, like everybody is sick. Yeah. Like 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 just walking around like a public high school, everybody's just kind of like, <clears throat> gotta go to the bathroom. Like that that, <laughs> that kind of stuff is going on. So uh, yeah. we missed last week's show. A lot of big news last week. Jake. Yeah. The audience is going to be surprised. And you were surprised when I told you this news. Yeah, I was. I bought a game, and you're going to hear about it next on Gamer's Corner. So to much surprise, I actually play video games. Isn't this fun? Um, <laughs> I picked up a game this week. That just came out, a new release. And I know you might be saying, what? this is the first this has ever happened. Nick has actually bought a new game. It is not the first I've ever, uh, I've ever bought a new game. I picked up Watch Dogs, and let me tell you, it's freaking awesome. Or Jake is, Jake's going to talk about this too. This game is, is, is amazing. This, this is a Grand Theft Auto hacker spy, just like, total badass game like like as you as you can see from these graphics you're like you're total like you know hacking into everything listening to personal phone conversations you know take taking over the the street light controls you're doing everything this game is so cool um it, it's a ubisoft game which is surprising um you have to on the on the pc i'm using you play that's a whole thing we'll talk about that um uh, but i mean jake what do you think about this game i mean um, how good is this so, I was really looking forward to this game for a while, um, and I'm really happy. You know, it kind of sucked that it got delayed for a while, but I'm happy it's finally out. And at first, I was actually kind of disappointed. Um, just want, like initially playing it, I'm like, oh, this is way, it was way more, I don't want to say generic, but um, I guess generic than I thought it would be in terms of um, it. Most of the time, the scenarios do end uh, turn up into like uh, turn out to be shooting scenarios and stuff like that. And just your typical like Grand Theft Auto esque missions and stuff, um, but the more I played, the better it got. Um, I mean, at first the driving, I, yeah, you know, Nick, you said too earlier that the, the driving it is really, I just bad. I guess there's not really a better way to say it. The controls for driving here, um, compared to uh, Grand Theft Auto, it's ridiculous. But uh, compared to even anything else, it's kind of. Um, crazy but uh you get used to it so it, it's not nearly as big of an issue as it is now for me um you know this game has been pretty polarizing in terms of reviews and stuff people either hate it or love it you know people say that the graphics and stuff are downgraded from the gameplay trailers and stuff um but you know I, at first i'm like okay i can see that but honestly th at the end of the day despite okay um you know the drive is not the best or the graphics may be a little bit worse and stuff but this game is just pure fun to play like i had a smile across my face most of the time playing this just because 
you can tackle each scenario in such a unique way. You can go to do a stealth way if you want to, um, you know, hack cameras and do it that way, or you can just go out guns blazing and stuff. And it's just really fun at the end of the day. Um, and that's what's important, really. Um, so yeah, Nick, what what are your thoughts on this? I I, I mean, uh, Jake, I'm probably gonna get a lot of crap for saying this, but we're talking about possible game of the year here. I mean, well, the, for the, you, yeah. The, well, and I think for everybody. Well, what, what, yeah. Let's take yeah. let's let's take a look at a few features of this game. First of all, <laughs> like you said, you can do whatever you want. It's it, this is not a story game. This is uh, it has a story aspect. But it's fairly weak so far. Like I've only played. A well, few no, missions, I'm not talking about the the, really the strength of the yet, story, but, yeah. but I mean, you you can do whatever. You don't have to do this story if you don't want to. I mean, yeah. you can just run around, uh, hack somebody's ATM, get two hundred dollars, do whatever, um, you know, chase people off the road. A really cool thing that I like with the, about this game is you'll be driving around, and there'll be this thing that says "possible crime detected." Oh, and yeah. you have to go up and you kind of like stealthily watch somebody, and then somebody else will come up and like you know point a gun at him and you just, you know blow the guy's brains away, and then you know you're the hero, and every, you know everybody's screaming and running, but you can do whatever you want in this game. Um, there's a few bugs. First of all, I actually used one of the bugs today. I hopped in the water when I was being chased by oh, the police, yeah, yeah. got in a boat and just you know drove away, no problem. Um, like Jake said, the driving. The the driving is it, it depends on the car, I guess. Some yeah. of the cars handle well. Like I, I'm I, I have a car now that I can pretty accurately uh, drift around a turn, and not have to like come to a complete stop and smash in other people uh, to use. So maybe that the driving is definitely not great. Um, and also, but for the driving, I've, I found that you can upgrade you know like your skill points into like the driving category and change stuff, and that dramatically makes it better. At least I, I found. Yeah, I think I've done two. Two things in the driving category so far. Um, I don't know. Th- this is a really good game. My, my I think my, so far my expectations have been met. From from the little bit I played, I've only played the first three or four missions. But but I mean, from from what I expected from the game for forty five dollars, because that's what I got it for. It's pretty good. I I I am. This is not a game that I'm going to look back on and say. Like like Titanfall for me. Titanfall was that game. I spent sixty dollars on Titanfall. I haven't played it since since the day I bought it. Um, but I think this game will be. I'll look back and you know whenever I finish the game and say this was a forty five dollars well spent uh, game. And I mean Jake, do you think that's the case for you? Um yeah, you know it was sixty for me and stuff. But uh yeah um one thing I do want to bring up is that the whole aspect of your game being invaded and kind of like a Dark Souls esque. Uh, online feature of that the first time that that happened where basically a notification pops up and it's like you're being hacked by another player um, wait hold on just, hold on hold on i have yeah. a question here that's yeah. what that means yeah so somebody else was in my game so if, if it says that you're being hacked and it shows like a progress bar at the bottom of them hacking your phone that's another player do they do a sample of that in the beginning I I'm, I'm pretty sure they do a, like a mandatory sample mission. Of okay, it, yeah. because that's what I saw. This guy started hacking me, and I I mean I, I ran him over. Yeah, it, it's so awesome. Just like it, it's good. Um, it's good. And you yeah. know what? This uh, the actually actually that that's funny that you say that because the point that I'm at now, when uh, you know I started getting prepped for the show, I was like, all right, I got to stop here. I had to invade somebody else. They require you to do that. Yeah. Or, or it, it it basically prompts you to do it, and that's where I sit, uh, t- turned it off, because um, it was an auto save point. Yeah, uh, the saving's a little messed up too. You have to go back to your hideout to save, and yeah. it costs five hundred dollars to save. Um, is five hundred dollars to save? Yeah, to sleep in the bed, it's five hundred dollars. Really? Yeah. Hmm. If you if, uh, it, when when you walk by the bed, or the first time you walk by the bed, you go into that like motel room or whatever. Yeah. It says sleep, and it says five hundred dollars. Oh, I didn't notice that. Wow. I, I, I hope so. I mean, that that's what I. That's kind it, of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna complain. I'm happy. Uh, there's a few bugs. Um, like the audio sometimes doesn't work on the PC. The PC version is a mess. If you can get it on a console, I would. Um, but the reason I bought PC was first I got it for forty five dollars on uh, uh using a, a a promo code, 
And I assume that there's going to be a lot of mods for this, similar to GTA, because it is that open world GTA kind of game. So that may be something as well. Um, you know, Jake, um, how was the gameplay on the on the PS4 in terms of you know shooting and, and stuff like that? Oh yeah, it's been pretty great. I mean, I haven't noticed that many uh, big glitches and stuff. But one thing I thought was pretty entertaining. So if you hack, um, you can hack like at anything on an enemy's person. So I made him. I made an enemy's grenade. Uh, get set off and it was during one of those missions where I had to like beat down these two guys I couldn't kill them so it was down to three guys the two that I had to beat down and couldn't kill and the one guy that I could kill so I hacked that one guy's grenade and he looks at it and he throws it at the two guys I wasn't supposed to kill and kills them I thought that was pretty funny um that the AI did that but um yeah I don't want it to seem that I'm being too negative on this game it's just at, you know, at first it was like, oh, okay, maybe I had my expectations a bit too high, but the more I played it, the more fun I had and stuff. So yeah, it's definitely really, really good. Yeah, and what we're showing on screen right now for anybody that's watching the video version is one of those scenes where there was crime detected, and now you're this guy tried uh, stabbing some girl, and now we're watching where um, the guy is, is now fleeing, and you know, we just I think a transformer or something blew up, and now now we do a takedown. But uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be negative. I'm, I'm happy with this game. This is one of the first times I've bought a game and actually been happy with it. Like right off the bat. Normally these games are a slow start, and this was a bit of a slow start. D don't, don't take it as this game is just perfect, perfect, perfect. It was a bit of a slow start, but for the most part, it's a pretty good game. And uh, I will be able to play more over um, next week. I've got Tuesday off, so I'm sure I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll be playing then. And uh, we'll go from there, so... That is Watch Dogs. Jake, I, I don't know about you, but this is a, a recommendation. If th this is this, I think this is a must-buy game. If, if you have an X-Gen console, this is a must-buy game. Yeah. I mean, uh, because it's Ubisoft, too, I can definitely see this becoming an annualized franchise. Uh, I feel like they're going to do... A, a Watch Dogs games are going to be around for a while. So. I hope so. I hope so, because yeah. it's uh, definitely good. Now, something that we missed last week when we missed the show, and I really wanted to talk about this, was the possibility of Twitch TV being bought by YouTube. And I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go too elaborate on this, just because it, it's like probably oh, it's almost two week old news now uh, that, that we're talking about it. But it, this is a pretty big story. Um, this th this could possibly I'm, I'm I'm wearing my Twitch shirt right now, um, and and I wore that 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 for a reason. Um, this could possibly change. The, the internet's biggest gaming CDN, which is Twitch. A um, few reasons here. Twitch is really loose on copyright. We can play music and stuff on live streams. They don't really care. Um, the, 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 they've got a great chat system. Uh, the the rev share is really good with their with their partners. And if YouTube uh, was to come in or Google was to come in and and change those aspects, have it be the copyright or the uh, the ad revenue stuff it would majorly change how that service operates and the amount of people that use it. So um, that that's Twitch. I, that That's just a quick summary of, of my thoughts. Jake, do you have anything to add to that? I don't know. I think you've summed it up pretty well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We might see it. We might not see it. I honestly have no clue. Uh, like I said, Wait, about two weeks old now. And Doesn't uh, YouTube already have their own like uh, live streaming service? They do. They have YouTube Live, but, it, but it's lacking. Uh, mm -hmm. The chat is like a YouTube update comment system. Uh, it, it's not anything like IRC uh, that that's like real time or whatever. So I don't know, but it would definitely it uh, it would people would stop using Twitch. That 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 is what I'm thinking with this because people use Twitch because they don't like using YouTube. Uh, in in most cases, there's been a lot of uh, people that, you know that even I used to watch on YouTube that have a million plus subscribers that have stopped uploading. And have moved over to doing Twitch live streams because, like I said, they can play music and stuff in their live streams and have a good time. The rev share is a whole lot better. They can do a two ninety nine or four ninety nine subscribe to a channel. Uh, I think that's what it is. Maybe five ninety nine. I'm not sure. The, you know, the money is good on Twitch, so that's where people are. And uh, who knows what would happen if uh, YouTube comes in? Now, Jake, mm. you sent me this story, and you said. Add this to the show notes. <laughs> yeah, that's how I said. Add this to the show. That, <laughs> when your text came in, that's how I read it. Like I like nah, 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 nah. add this to the show notes kind of thing. <laughs> Jake, how excited are you for this announcement? 
I'm pretty excited. What announcement is this? That uh, you will be able to use GameCube controllers on the Wii U for the new Super Smash Brothers game. Woo! Yeah. Um, I, I didn't expect this at all because I believe even they, Nintendo stated uh, maybe around a year ago or so that your fans are going to have to get used to not using the GameCube controller for Smash and everything and moving on. And then they make this. So obviously I feel like if the Wii U was doing well, they wouldn't have made this. They're really trying to get as many people on board as possible. And hey, I think it's an awesome idea. So um, that's definitely cool. And something interesting is in the picture, it shows that like a Smash Brothers logo on the controller. I don't think that this means that they're going to be manufacturing GameCube controllers anytime soon. Um, I just thought that was a pretty interesting little thing of what th- that could possibly mean. I disagree. Uh, now, what was that? I, I, I disagree completely with you. I think that the reason they are making this adapter is because they're going to start making GameCube controllers for, um, f- for, for the new Super Smash Bros. Um, mm. I mean, I, I doubt that 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 they would. P- I don't know. I mean, if you look at the picture, it, it looks like the logo is fabricated on there. So, I, I honestly think that th- this is a way for them to make money. Oh uh, yeah, they're, they're I, most people that would probably be interested in this already have a GameCube controller. So I'm not sure how well that's going to work. Um, but th- this is pretty cool. And uh, oh, yeah. quickly going back to the picture, it. Do you have to use two USB ports? So, the way that I think it's going to work, they haven't commented on this at all, but I'm pretty sure just to like reduce latency, they're going to have the first two uh, controller ports be one USB and the second two be another USB. I mean, I'm assuming that's how they're going to do it. They haven't really commented on it at all. Okay, so you're saying that the that the hub itself would have two, U, have two USB buses, one for the first yeah. two. Um, I, I, you know what? Maybe, but... That controller can't have that much, uh, like, I can't imagine that if four controls plugged in would max out a USB port. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm yeah. not sure what kind of technology they're using this um, behind it. Uh, Jake, how, how much is something like this going to cost? Um, I am fairly sure we're going to see a bundle of some sort with the game, maybe okay. for $10 extra, but I think standalone, probably 20, 15 to $20 is what we're going to really? look at. You, th- you think that low? Oh yeah! If it, nobody's gonna buy it, if it's more than twenty dollars, you think so? See, I think this is like a fifty dollars product here. This is like Ooh. this is Nintendo trying to cash in and saying, you know what, Jake, you really want to play with the GameCube controller because I know you <laughs> do. I know <laughs> Jake, you do. Here you go, fifty bucks. I think they'd be stupid not to do that because this. I mean, they're gonna have to develop this device. I don't know what kind of proprietary stuff it's gonna have on the inside, but um, another thing that I just thought of. I'm surprised nobody's done this already. So you actually, my friend actually ordered an adapter off of like Hong Kong or something where basically it plugs, it fools the system into thinking that the GameCube controller is a classic controller. So you plug it into an adapter, which plugs into the bottom of the Wii remote. Uh And I actually was messing around with it and that works flawlessly. And you it has turbo and stuff if you want on there too. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty awesome. And those go for like 15 bucks. You can get them off Amazon and stuff. Okay. But that's you know per controller, and it's really kind of tricking the system. So like the start button doesn't work and stuff. But um, so it, it is available now. Okay, cool, but, uh, cool. And uh, th- this will be good for the for the fighting community because now oh, yeah. they'll, they'll be able to you know, sit back in that uh with with their game controls. I want to get into I want to get into melee. I really do, but I don't want to spend forty dollars on it, because that's that's how much it costs. If you go on eBay, it, it, melee is forty dollars. Why why is this the case, Jake? Why why is melee so much? Well, it's such a popular game. You know, it came out and it never really dropped in price. Um, this is honestly the case for the majority of Nintendo's big first party games. Um, if you if you want to get the original Smash Brothers on N sixty four, that's like a forty to fifty dollar game. Um, like Pikmin 2 on GameCube is still like $55 to $60 and stuff just because Nintendo games are good and they, it's one of the rare cases where they don't lose value over time. They retain, if not gain value. Has it always been like this? Or is this something that since these tournaments have started popping up everywhere, have the prices, has the, have the prices gone up? I mean... I believe it's been like this. And since I've been really looking into like collecting and stuff like that since like maybe 2008, 
uh, it's been pretty steady. Oh, okay. So interesting. See, honestly, I didn't even know that there was a community of people like this that that played that played melee competitively until I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago. Is when like the first time I heard I've heard about it, but the first time I actually started looking, like, wow, this is like a legit thing here. There's you know, there's big money placed on you know uh, playing as Princess Peach in uh, Super mm. Smash Bros. tournament. So uh, that's that's really cool and. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's something I'd get into. Um, I just I don't know. Forty dollars for a uh, for a game plus the GameCube. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a good uh, uh, garage sale deal. Garage sales, yeah. Yeah, that's. I'm getting into that this summer too. That that'll be a whole thing. I, you know, I'll be like, oh, I want to put this money towards show. Nope, it's gonna go to buying some used piece of crap at a garage sale. Who knows? Who knows what may happen? Hey, Jake. Yeah. Xbox One. Yeah. Coming to Japan. This is good for uh, any 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 of our Japan listeners. Or anybody in Japan that wants to be playing the Xbox One. Here it is. They have announced the two versions of the Xbox One in Japan. The original, or I'm sorry, the Xbox One without the Kinect, the just standalone Xbox One, will be launching September 4th for 30 or almost 40,000 yen, which is $392. And the Kinect bundle will be launching at uh, almost 50,000 yen, which is. Four hundred ninety nine dollars. So, price is pretty comparable to, uh, uh, actually, yeah, pretty comparable to what you'd be paying in the United States um, for this after the conversion rate. But uh, this is good. Th- th- this is good that now the Xbox, uh, you know, they're, they're lacking on sales. They're very far behind the PlayStation sales. This is another big market that hopefully they can get into. I assume that the one without Connect will sell a whole lot better because it, it, like I said, it's you know, it's only less than four hundred dollars or whatever. So I imagine that will sell a lot better uh, in the Japanese market. But, uh, I mean, Jake, is this, is this the right step for Microsoft? Is this is this another step in the right direction to get sales up and get people more interested uh, in, the, in the Xbox? Well, I'm going to take kind of a radical approach here. And uh, I honestly believe, believe that they shouldn't ever release the Xbox One in Japan. And I know I'm going to get a lot of hate and stuff for that. Hater. Uh, no, and it's understandable. Because, but if, just historically speaking... The Xbox 360 bombed in Japan. It is, uh, I mean, the only reason it was a complete, it wasn't a complete failure was like the beginning of its life, exclusive JRPGs like Blue Dragon and stuff like that. So, you know, they really tried to reach the Japanese market and stuff, but it is not even in the same universe compared to Nintendo and Sony. Why, uh, why is that the case? I mean, you, you seem like you've done some research on this. Why can Microsoft not go into the Japanese market and have success? Is this because Nintendo is such a huge company and, and Sony is in, in Japan? Well, and yeah, those are both intrinsically Japanese companies, too. And if you look at, like, the games on Xbox, the majority of them are Western-developed RPGs or shooters and stuff. And for the most part, those genres don't sell well in Japan. Um, if you look at the charts, you know, we have Monster Hunter is huge, and that's it's Japanese of a game you can get. And generally speaking... Um, they don't the western games don't sell as well there i mean there are some exceptions like uncharted sells really well there and stuff like that um but just because you know nintendo and sony have that variety i feel like of the japanese and you can play some western games and stuff on there too but xbox the it is it is microsoft is it's a western company um and it, even with the original xbox 360 they have never really uh succeeded in japan and they've tried obviously so I mean, with the way that the Xbox One is doing in America, it's not doing awfully, but it's not doing great. I don't think this was the right time, if at all, to uh, move into Japan. So you, just wrapping that up, you, so you do think this will be a total flop in Japan? Um, oh, yeah. Now, um, why, I, I feel like I've already asked this question, but why why are they not interested in the Western influenced games are, are they just not into the whole like shoot 'em up kind of stuff because i mean that, that that's a lot of the stuff that the xbox has to offer are they just not into that kind of stuff i mean I don't, it's just what sells there you know so okay. it's a different culture and stuff yeah. so yeah interesting interesting i honestly had no clue how the i i that was not even something i th- uh thought about researching was how well the xbox th- uh, 360 uh sold in japan so Maybe it won't be the right step. Maybe it will be. Who knows, Jake? Maybe this thing will go in there and people will say, you know what? I really want to connect. This thing looks awesome. And a bunch of people will pick it up so that they can uh, ride around on a, you know, skidoo in, uh, a, sk- a skidoo in, like, 
connect rival sports or water sports, wh- whatever it is. Um, who knows? Maybe the connect is that enticing feature because I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played any of like the the two player uh, jet ski games, but, <laughs> but but it's pretty good on the connect. Um, so who knows? Maybe this will be a total flop. Maybe it won't. Jake. I've got a deal for you, my friend. <laughs> you are a uh, a gamer. Maybe, maybe you want to get into the PC gaming. I've got a oh, deal boy. for you. Battlefield Three. Oh yeah, it's a, it, it's old. It's older. Battlefield Four is out, but guess what? It's free. Battlefield Three is free on Origin. It's part of their on the house program, which we talked about a few weeks ago. Um, Planet Plants vs Zombies is on the on the house program this is a program where they are taking triple a titles here and giving them away uh, battlefield 3 is, is not a new game but it's it's still a very relevant game this is not a game that was developed 15 years ago but i think battlefield 3 came out in like 2008 maybe 2010 two, i think okay 2008 2009 2010 somewhere around there this is a pretty new game you know this game may be only three or four years old here this is free, part of Origins on the house, and and uh, my whole theory behind this is that they're trying to get people to use their Origin client, which um, it's not great. O- or- I have a little story about this, yeah. actually. Go ahead. T- tell us about Origin, because so, I had problems with Uplay as well. Go ahead. Yeah, earlier today, I'm like, oh, Battlefield 3, I'll get, I'll get that. Um, I remember vaguely creating an Origin account a long time ago, so I typed in my email and stuff. I'm like, okay, I do have an account. I don't remember my password, but um, I'll hit recover. All right. Uh, it says it sent an email. Waited a good half hour. Went to the spam. Wasn't there. Inbox never came. Did it a few more times. Uh, nothing happened. I looked this up. Apparently, this is an extremely common problem where basically if you lose your password, uh, you pretty much aren't going to be able to gain access to your account in terms of um, – unless you call them up and even then it's been spotty since. And that's kind of ridiculous. I thought that, um, I was reading forums and stuff. This has been going on since origin launched. And even the most recent, uh, like case about this was even like two days ago and people are still having this problem. And I think that's kind of ridiculous. So I actually had to, cause I wanted to play battlefield three for free and PC who wouldn't, um, created a whole new email origin sucks aptly named, and uh, made a new Origin account, Origin Sucks One, and um, g- got Battlefield. But uh, I, it was kind of ridiculous of how, how much of a process that was. Oh, and, and there's problems in... All right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I know I'm going to get some hate for this. Every, can we please all move to Steam? Yeah. Please? I spent 45 minutes trying to get freaking Uplay open before I could even start my Watch Dogs download. Ubisoft servers are, are offline. Ubisoft servers are offline. Ubisoft servers are offline. Stop using your own shitty proprietary service. It, it, they, it's not working. You have one good game on your service. Move it over to Steam. Don't max out your servers and let them handle it. I, I'm so sick of these companies creating their crappy third-party clients that don't work. They don't work. Uplay is trash. Origin is just as bad. Every time I start my computer... Origin fails to start every single time. It's it, it not responds every single time I start my computer. The, 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 these the, these third party uh, game services they're garbage. They're garbage. Please, for the love of God, move to Steam. They've got their stuff to, down. Their servers are extremely quick. I download Steam games at over five megabits a second. That is extremely quick, extremely quick for games. Rant over. I mean, Jake, it's ridiculous, right? I mean, I, I spent I spent forty five dollars on a game now, and I'm waiting forty five minutes to get Origin open. And then the best part, or I'm sorry, not Origin, you play. And the best part, after it finished installing, I had to do a restart. So great, another half an hour trying to log into their service. Uh, it, it, it's just ridiculous. I, I mean, right? Am I yeah. am I crazy for like? <laughs> I, I'm I'm no I'm no Steam lover, but but it works. I don't have problems connecting to Steam. Steam is hardly ever down. F- fix your stuff, guys. It, it, and, it, you know, if you want to use your, your third-party gaming service, make sure it works. Do a beta test. Do something. Because, I, I, honestly, I, I'm so fed up with um, 
with having to use this stuff. And the only reason I'm using Uplay, and now you're going to tell me, you could have bought Watch Dogs on Steam. The only reason I bought it on Uplay is because it was $45. If it was $60, would have bought it on Steam. Rant's over. Jake, mm. tell us about Mario Kart 8 early. What, what was going on here? Uh, you know, there have been reports online about various people finding various uh, copies of Mario Kart 8 from um, uh, Sears stores around the country. Um, what, is, what, is, what is Sears? Sears is just an American. Uh, big, I guess, what big, would you. They're, they're a big box, they're a big box yeah, store. Yeah, but it's. Um, yeah, some of them don't even have, like, video games or electronics departments at all. Like, generally, you would go there for, like, more like a. Their appliances, uh, tools, yeah, tools and like uh, outdoors supplies and stuff. They have that clothes. They're almost too, like but... um like a Macy's a little bit like the uh, not as much with the clothes, but I don't know. They're, yeah, they're like what Walmart and Target aren't. Like, yeah, I guess that's the best uh, way to put it. They're a big. They're all over the U.S. and all over the world. The Sears Tower in uh, crap. Where is that? So it's not. It's, it's what. What is it called now? It's it, not the Sears. It's not Tower. the Sears Tower. That's the one where like you step off onto the platform. Isn't that the one? Where you yeah, step off it's onto no the longer called. It's like the. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, this well, that that shows the future of uh of Sears there when they lost the name of their tower. Um, so they were breaking the street date of Willis a game. Tower. Willis Tower. Now, Jake, what is street date for people that don't know the term street date? What does that mean? Well, uh, when game. Stores get games early, and uh, the release date is when they're allowed to, you know, street date is when they're allowed to put it on the shelf. So they get games earlier to make sure that they have them in order for the day, day to come, uh, put them on the shelf. And, you know, this happens sometimes with uh, stores that don't necessarily deal with this kind of stuff often, like Sears. If, not all of them have video game departments and stuff. So it wasn't that surprising that some of them were selling it early. You know, me and Nick, we, we called up Sears. I'm sorry, um, who? Who? You, Nick. I'm sorry. Did you mean to say Nick? Nick, oh Nick my and I. God. Nick and I. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, well, no. Hold on. There's no <laughs> Nick and I here. I picked up my phone and I called okay. Sears. I it called was a collective Sears. Thing. It was not collective at all. You're like Nick. What are you doing? I'm like I'm calling Sears. You're like, oh really? <laughs> I pick. I called the local Sears. I'm like, hello. The lady's like, oh, hi, how can I help you? I'm like, uh, Mario Kart 8, can I have your name, please? Give her my name. Let me check that for you. Would you like to enter an email address? I'm like, no, I'm just I'm just looking to see if a game is in stock. Oh, unfortunately, it's not in stock at this location. Well, if you give me your email, we can send you a copy. No, I'm not interested in that. Can we send it to the store? Have a great day. And then I hung up. Uh, now, Jake, something interesting with that. You called the next day? Uh, it was later that day. Later that, and what what answer did you get? I uh yeah oh yeah well, of course we have that in stock. <laughs> and I'm like oh, awesome! I'm gonna come pick it up. It's like and you can tomorrow when it comes out. I'm like oh, all right. <laughs> so uh, some it was a, a Sears in Chicago is who broke the street. They'll, they'll probably get they'll get a slap on the wrist from Nintendo. No yeah. bad Sears. Don't do this ever again. It, it's not like it's not a law or anything. It's it's a rule that people follow. So. That that's you don't you don't normally hear that's not normally too often that, that that you see mass mass people being able to buy a game that early. Yeah. So, uh, Jacob, are you are you a little upset that you couldn't get it early? Oh, I'm not upset. I mean, it would have been nice, but uh, I'm fine. You're tomorrow. Fine. Oh yeah, um, you are getting it tomorrow next yeah. week. Next week we'll have to talk about it. So we talked about this two weeks ago, and that is Apple possibly buying Beats. And it happened. Just want to cover. Just want to talk about the news uh, real quick here. Apple has officially bought Beats Electronics. Uh, Beats, the headphone manufacturer. You can see a logo uh, job here with the Beats logo uh, with the red Apple uh, logo in the middle, which is pretty cool. Um, it is. It is is official. The Beats by Dr. Dre have been uh, officially con- uh, officially acquired by Apple. It was uh, $3 billion was the deal, and it was a $2.6 billion cash deal, which was split in half between Dr. Dre and uh, his, his partner, and then $400 million uh, in stock uh, of, of Apple. So that, that, that's a significant amount of money uh, 
for a company. So that is, that is now official. It's not it's not speculation anymore. It has happened. Apple has bought Beats Electronics. Uh, I actually mistitled this article, and I almost said the wrong thing here. Pax Prime, which is the I think you could say probably one of the probably one of the biggest gaming events in the in the world, uh, which is it's held in Seattle every year. It sold out in less than half an hour. This is insane. Um, this this event is huge, and I mean, Jake, less than half an hour. That that this is you're talking like concert. It was selling an hour. hour. I, I'm sorry, it was an hour. Yeah. Okay, so so an hour. But this is like how this is how quick concerts sell out, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, th- that's that's pretty significant. That a gaming convention can sell out almost as quick as a concert. I mean, what, what, what I mean, what does that mean for an event like this? Is this is, are we going to see these kind of events start going more to the mainstream and not be something that only gaming losers go to? Because that's what we're. I mean, that that's what. Oh, you loser! You're going to go <laughs> sit with a bunch of nerds and packs and battle with paper swords or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, are, is this going to be something that we start seeing more and more? Because the, these conventions happen, but the sellout time is unbelievable. An hour yeah. for a, a whole convention center in Seattle? I mean, what, what are your thoughts on this, Jake? Because you sent me a message about this, and you, and you seem pretty shocked. Oh, I wasn't shocked. I mean... I knew this was going to happen because you know, the big appeal of PAX is where E3 is a closed thing to the media. As long as you have the money, you can go to PAX. Anybody can go to PAX. And uh, these fairly large companies show up there. And, uh, it's a big, awesome thing. So that's like the most um, viable and easy way for the general consumer to get into the industry, kind of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just announced PAX South this year. Mm-hmm. Um, Which will be so taking place in... Uh- which would be taking place in Dallas uh, if yeah, anybody's yeah. in there. So obviously it's doing very well for them. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was trying to find it. I didn't uh, get a chance to, but there was a chart I saw of uh, historically the times that it took to sell, to sell out. I think last year for PAX Prime, it would maybe like two or four hours. Then it was like eight hours, then like 12 hours, then like a day, then like four days and stuff. So it's been like exponentially uh, selling out quicker. So, who knows what it will be next year? Um, yes, and who knows what it will be at PAX East? <laughs> yes, yes. Jake, I think we're done here. Oh, yeah. You have any, any anything else you want to talk about? No. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jake underscore Zembrowski, Z E M B R Z U S K I. There you go. And uh, Jake, yeah, you working on anything for the website? We got any articles coming up? You gonna talk about anything? I've been actually. I've had a Mario Golf review done for a while. I just have to send it to you, <laughs> Slacker. Yeah. Well, ha- well. Hopefully, w- I will pressure Jake to get that up by the weekend. We'll yeah. we'll have we'll have Mario Golf the Mario Golf review up by this weekend. All right, Jake. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks for stopping by. I, I say stopping by like you just like it. You're like, hey, I'm gonna be on the show this week. My name is Nick Craig. At Gamecast Live is my Twitter handle. RaiderGaming.net is my website. Check it out. Uh, we do the show live every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're on the Roku. You can download our app on the Roku. We, I actually got a tweet from uh, from a Mister from a Mister Nicky D on uh, on Twitter who said he found our show on the Roku. I I, uh, I assume he'll be watching more episodes. He seemed to really like the show. Uh, so that's cool. You can check that out on Roku. Also, check out our website. Click on the Amazon button. Helps us out if you're uh, shopping on Amazon to get part of the credit. Goes towards the show. Buying new equipment. Possibly a trip somewhere in the future. Who knows? And uh, you can check that out over there. And Outer Limit Host. If you need uh, web hosting, use the promo code SAVE10. Save 10%. Our starter hosting plan is just $90 a year, so get your website up for less than $100 a year. You can check that out over at OuterLimitHost.com. Guys, thanks for watching this week's episode of On the Radar. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back next week to bring you the latest in gaming and tech news. And until next week, we'll see you.